And how you guys doing? Welcome to episode 801. Today we're going to focus on one story that has actually been in my mind lately. And that was the drive-by shooting of a pagan out on the East Coast. The media, they can't get it right. Either he's dead, he's in critical condition, or he's doing well. Well, he is doing well. That's the media for you. But at the same time, it's got me really wondering about what the hell is going on. Now, this is a personal opinion. And I'm allowed to have one. I'm an opinionated guy. But at the same time, I really like to see good things coming for the club scene. It's not like I'm trying to go out there and bash them. Hey, look, this is in the news. And that's what we do is try to convey the news to you. When something like this happens, it kind of throws you off. Every, yes, it's happened before in the club scene. You've had bombings go off, all that kind of stuff. But this one is more recent. He was shot in the face. And thank God he's alright. Because I, I really, I don't like seeing people get hurt. I don't like seeing people get killed. Because we all have something in common. And that is riding motorcycles. If you took off all the club colors from all the clubs, that would be the basic premise. Ride in your motorcycle and having brotherhood. It's when you put those colors on, you got your alpha males, and you got guys that have an attitude of trying to conquer the world, that things get bad. One thing clubs have been focusing on a lot lately, and really have gotten the word out to a lot of independents is clubs are not gangs. This incident, though, and you'll see it in the video because it's going to recap everything I'm talking about, have people in the area questioning themselves, well, am I going to get caught up in the crossfire? And duly so, they should have been worried when they seen this kind of report on it. Even though bikers stick to their own, it's usually within this scene. They'll never go after citizens. That's just the way bikers think. This ain't street gangs out on the Chicago south or west side. And yes, it happens on the north side and all that before I start getting the hate mail about being racist this and being racist this, why are you only focusing on the south and west side? Well, that's where it happens the most. There is no consideration with these street gangs when they're doing drive-by shootings. We have a lot every weekend where people are getting shot and killed. And you know what? That right there is a really sad thing. You got little kids getting shot. You got grandmothers, grandfathers, people that have nothing to do with the business between them people. I hate to see clubs put in that category. I really do. I get it. It's not going to be all cookies and ice cream. It's not the Boy Scouts. I get that. I know that. But do civilians know that? And you're going to say, well, I don't care what civilians have to say. Fine, dandy. But they're the ones who elect the people that make the laws, and in return are the ones that serve on juries. So how much can you say you really don't care? Clubs have been fighting for a better image in modern times. And you have to admit, a lot of the clubs run off the reputation of the older generations. It's just a fact. It was no easy going decades ago. No, it was rough, tough, and hardcore stuff. 
You would think, though, with all the technology that has happened in recent years, everybody would say, you know what, enough's enough of this. It's real funny. If you ask one of the younger guys in these clubs, why do you hate the other team? What makes you think that you see one, you got to beat one? They will not have an answer for you because they don't know other than what an older member told them. They don't know why they're fighting. All they know is they were told that we hate them and they hate us. One thing I'm very happy with is Demon's Row came out with Ride More, Politic Less. That's a very good slogan right there. And I encourage you to go buy some merch to spread that kind of word. Ride more, politic less. Really do. And it kind of hits home at what a lot of independents say because they love clubs, but they might not be liking the action of clubs and they don't like the attention that is brought from these kind of beefs. Just like now the citizens out there are worried and you, again, I'm going to show the video. That way you get a background on what I'm talking about. I just want to put a, a little monologue out there to show what my feelings are. And hopefully you're going to have feelings about this as well. No man, no woman should be shot, killed, beat up over some stuff that happened 50 years ago. 50 years? Come on, you think it's time to let that loose? You think it's time to know that if you couldn't end the battle 50 years ago, and you're going to let it keep on going on, well, there is going to be law enforcement coming down on your ass. And then where is the initial bedrock of what the motorcycle club should be. Brotherhood, right in your motorcycle. Where is that? Did it get lost? Very interesting question. Can it be answered? Can it be? Well, obviously, it doesn't seem like it. An episode we did a couple days ago, and right now it's up on YouTube, Spotify, all that kind of stuff, because this is a radio show, so you know, because we get a lot of uh, stuff. Well, get to the point. Why are you talking so much? Well, it's not a YouTube video. You're just seeing me recording the first half of the podcast, which, by the way, let's plug it. It's all over, uh, you know, it's one of the number one podcasts out there for the biker lifestyle. Get it on any platform you want. And don't forget to subscribe anyway to YouTube. Anyway, we did a deal with our motorcycle clubs dying. Now, it gave a ton of different examples of why it could be happening. And the biggest one that came up was politics people do not care for that kind of stuff anymore and it could be outside it could be inside politics they just don't want it it's all about writing to them it's all about friendship to them they like being able to talk to whoever the hell they like talking to they don't want to be held down by a bunch of rules or be told hey we hate them guys, so we got to be on the lookout or we got to take them out. I cannot imagine, and I went through this, having to watch your back every time you ride your motorcycle. Are you going to wonder if there's going to be somebody that shoots you off the bike or takes you out with a car? That really ain't enjoying the lifestyle. It really isn't. 
You know, we had that incident with 81 and the Vagos out in uh, Henderson, Vegas, basically. And now we have this one out on the East Coast. Two shootings, one on the highway. Come on, it was captured on film. It was captured on video. And what was the point to that? Was it retaliation like law enforcement says on, you know, for something earlier on in California? Who knows? And why did this happen on the East Coast, right in front of the clubhouse? You might think, well, we hit them good. But at the same time, you're bringing attention to yourself. Help. The Hells Angels on the East Coast, they got hit by the feds real freaking hard, man, in the last week. And it could be all over this. You know, the informants, the CIs, they're all getting that information to their handlers. And next thing you know, you got raids all over the place because they're scared of the violence escalating. And they want to get it to before it does. Which I have to admit, man, at least they're doing that on the East Coast. They sure the hell didn't do that in Waco when they had a chance to stop everything, but they let it go. And next thing you know, nine people are dead. But they had a chance to break it up, and they didn't. That's law enforcement's job. When it is the same way with Members of clubs is you don't want to get caught. Let's take a look at this video and come back and uh, give some thoughts on it. In Pawtucket on Saturday in what investigators believe is a part of an ongoing feud between warring motorcycle gangs. The 49-year-old who was shot in the face remains in critical condition. Target 12 investigator Tim White has covered outlaw motorcycle clubs extensively, joining us live in studio at 4.30 now. So um, you got wind late last week that police were in fact concerned about potential violence for the weekend. Yeah, Brian, I obtained a Massachusetts State Police intelligent, uh, intelligence report that that uh, warned Massa uh, Massachusetts law enforcement agencies in southeastern Massachusetts and here in Rhode Island that the Pagan Motorcycle Club was holding a fundraiser and clashes could ignite. Now the fundraiser was to raise money for some of their members who were assaulted in an incident this past May where police say members of the rival club Hell's Angels attacked the Pagans in Fall River. We know police in Pawtucket are looking to see if the shooting was linked to that ongoing feud. And Tim, as you've reported, there are multiple factions of these motorcycle gangs right. right in our region. Yeah, there are. I mean, obviously, the most well-known one is the Hells Angels. The Pagans also have a footprint in this area. And another big gang called the Outlaws are in the region as well. And all three of these gangs clash with each other. Then there are these smaller affiliate clubs, for instance. There's a club called the Sidewinders, and they are aligned with the Hells Angels. And in 2019, police say a member of the Sidewinders was shot and killed by a member of the Outlaws following a late night brawl outside a Fall River bar. Now, the Hells Angels chapter in Rhode Island, it's headquartered on Messer Street in Providence. Yep. They have been the subject of several police raids over the years. Oh, yeah, and Brian, all of these motorcycle groups are firmly on law enforcement radar. In February, the president of the Hells Angels, Joe Lancia, was sentenced to five years in prison on a weapons charge. He was arrested following a dramatic daytime raid on that clubhouse that you're talking about. And we learned from that case that the state police had installed what's called a pole camera outside the clubhouse to constantly monitor their activity. So they're keeping a very close eye on them. And as you can imagine, as you at home can imagine, the big fear might be you get caught up in the midst of this. Uh, what do yeah, you have to say about I that? I mean, when you have two warring gangs like that, that is exactly the big fear that law enforcement has. And I've talked to them in recent days, and they all say they're on high alert and probably will be all summer as tensions between these groups have really hit a fever pitch. Target 12 investigator Tim White, thanks for being with us. By the way, before we get going, Reader's Rides or Subs Rides, whatever it is, you can get your motorcycle featured right behind me on YouTube. I love to feature some of the bikes that our, our followers have. Just email the picture to info at insanethrottlebikernews.com. 
that's what this is all about is again bikes tricking them out at, you know competing for the best stuff and then riding as much as you can and enjoying those around you there shouldn't be any type of this stuff but i get it i do but when you have civilians Worried about getting caught in the crossfire? You're really bringing all the trouble onto yourself. It's no joke, and that's something that you should see. And again, you might not care. You don't have to care about my opinion, because everybody has one. But you really should start doing that inward-looking type of deal and say to yourself, is it worth burying a brother or is it worth a bunch of guys going to prison the rest of their life for some beef you don't know how started how it started 50 years ago even the italians in new york when they established a commission knew all the killings was bad for business it would get the cops all over them even they knew that Maybe one day bikers will know that that are in clubs. Maybe one day things go cool. I know a lot of big 1%er clubs that are getting together right now, which is a great idea. But are they getting together for the right reason? Who knows? That's their business, not mine. I don't care about that stuff. What I do care is the perception that people have when these type of drive-bys happen, or when civilians are witness to a highway shooting, recording this stuff, hearing their reactions, you got to remember, civilians don't know one club from another. All they know is what they've been fed through the news media, that they're motorcycle gangs. And then you have to go out there and fight that kind of propaganda from the media. But at the same time, you have to sit back and ask yourself, well, was that some gang shit? Yeah. It was, you can't deny it, a drive-by shooting. Again, we see them all the time in Chicago. I bet you see them all the time in L.A., New York, all the big cities. Yeah, that's some gang shit. And then you can't sit there and get mad when it's used in the news media because you put yourself into that position. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Ride more, politic less, and will clubs ever get that? Will they ever say, you know what, enough's enough of all this. We gotten away from our foundation, which was motorcycles and brotherhood. Did they get to a point where they need to say, you know what, all this territorial crap sucks. We got guys going to prison. We got guys being buried over what? We all believe in the same thing. Most, of the, A lot of veterans in these clubs. Come on. You guys were cool as hell in the military together. Bring it out on the streets. Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show right now with China Dow right after this music break. Thanks for watching the entire video. I applaud your attention span. I know it's hard to make it through all these YouTube videos. But if you can, subscribe to the channel. That really helps us out as well as sharing the video. On all your social media platforms, don't forget to like it. Rock on.